Hello friends, welcome back to Talktive. Did you know the first high-speed railway in Southeast Asia began operating in October, four years behind schedule and considerably over budget? Wuxia Railway can reach speeds of up to 350 km per hour and connects two of Indonesia's largest cities, Jakarta and Bandung. For many, this high-speed railway signifies a modernization of Indonesia's transportation sector. For others, doubts continue to linger even as the railway enters the operational phase. Trips between Jakarta and Bandung take three hours by conventional train or two hours by car. High-speed rail cuts the journey to only 40 minutes. But the price tag that Indonesia is paying might exceed the benefits. President Joko Widodo's political drive for infrastructure development in Indonesia has brought remarkable results. Within nine years, the administration has built about 2,000 kilometers of toll roads, and the new high-speed railway adds to that legacy. But it will also have an enduring cost. Policymakers acknowledge that public transportation projects will take years to be profitable, but that should not be an umbrella under which to hide from questions about sustainability. The new railway was financed by a loan from the China Development Bank and a fund for the Indonesia-China State Enterprises Consortium. The final price tag was significantly higher than the global average for building high-speed rail. The Jakarta-Bandung Railway cost $52 million per kilometer, higher than high-speed rail in China, France, or Spain. It is, however, worth noting that variables such as terrain complexities and population density in the project area also drove this price. Over an adequate distance, high-speed rail can be competitive against more carbon-intensive flights along a matching corridor. However, in the case of the Jakarta-Bandung High-Speed Railway, 3 billion project connected two cities that already enjoyed 38 railway trips per day. There was little economic case to create a faster alternative, unless the line is extended to more distant cities such as Surabaya. Any further development will depend on the financial viability of the project, the capacity to generate money to cover the operational cost and debt. Indonesia bears the $1.2 billion cost overrun as the majority shareholder. Although the Chinese debt trap narrative surrounding poor countries burdened by Beijing's unsustainable loans might be a tempting critique of the project for the Indonesian public, the risk is more on the operational side. Indonesia's state-owned enterprise sought a bigger share in the KCIC consortium, taking percent, leaving China Railway Engineering Corporation the rest. This signaled Indonesia's ownership, but it also meant carrying the huge upfront costs associated with the project, especially around land acquisition, as well as unforeseen costs linked to delays. The early operation of the Jakarta-Bandung High-Speed Railway has enjoyed a demand surge with 13,000 passengers per day, higher than the 7,000 passengers each day on intercity trains. But once the early public excitement fades, the challenge will be to build a loyal customer base. This could involve targeting passengers that value time more than money, e.g. intercity workers. It may be possible for the high-speed railway to partner with companies to provide employee packages. The other opportunity from the Jakarta-Bandung high-speed railway is having provided Indonesia access to Chinese technology, the world's largest high-speed rail network builder. A transfer of technology scheme can open the door to advance Indonesia's domestic production to grow as a player in the region's railway industry. But again, this potential all depends on ensuring the Jakarta-Bandung venture is a success. Indonesia's policymakers and business leaders must ensure a prudent business case is made with a clear estimation on the risk appetite and ability to repay debt. The outcomes of this infrastructure investment eventually serve as foreign partners' evaluation for future investment decisions. Delivering and operating the first high-speed railway in Southeast Asia is a milestone for the country, only if the cost doesn't become a millstone, too. Overall, the project is ambitious and has the potential to be a game-changer for Indonesia's infrastructure. However, questions remain about its economic viability and the true benefits it will bring. So, our journey ends here. Please subscribe our channel. Thanks for watching.